Lawmakers will convene in a few weeks for the 2017 legislative session. The state budget will be a priority during the 60-day session, certainly. But campaign finance reform, the minimum wage, and other key issues will also be up for consideration. Tell us what you think should be the top priorities for lawmakers this year. Get in touch with us here at New Mexico in Focus. Dot org or find us on Facebook or Twitter. I'm joined this week by Tom Garrity from the Garrity Group PR. Sophie Martin's here. She's an attorney and editor of DukeCityFix.com. Retired UNM political professor Christine Sierra is back with us. And Mary T. Torres, an attorney at the offices of Mary T. Torres. Now, Christine, starting with you. We learned this week that House Speaker Don Tripp plans to resign uh, after the session opens. The Republicans hand control of the House back to Democrats, but he just got reelected in November. This is highly unusual, isn't it, to have somebody resign that quickly. What did you make of this? Well, I don't know the reasons for that mm -hmm. resignation. Um, certainly the process uh, suggests that he's resigning now so that the governor can appoint someone uh -huh. who the county commissioners from the counties that Tripp represents, right. uh, they will put forward a name or two and the governor gets to appoint. Mm -hmm. Essentially what you're doing then with more lead time is you're creating an incumbent. Mm -hmm. uh, that person will fill out Don Tripp's uh, right. uh, term, but mm -hmm. by 2018, that person will have already name recognition and right. some of the advantages of incumbency. It, it is like a chess game, Tom Garrity, isn't it? A, a timing, as Christina mentioned, is it a tricky thing as well for Don Tripp, but it, just it does change the dyna dynamics a little bit. And I'm curious what you're expecting coming up in the House for, for legislative priorities for Democrats, certainly. What, what's going to be happening there in your view? Well, that's going to be very interesting. You know, whenever you have a sea change of leadership at the speaker level and uh, with the majority, you know, you have, a, you, know, you have everything from different names of committees. Right. Uh, you have different priorities. You know, of course, minimum wage has been a, a big talk. Uh, you know, I think the, uh, the leadership in the House uh, really now has an opportunity to shape the economic discussion, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, probably I think the number one priority for the state is how do you turn around the economics of the state, whether that's tax reform right. uh, or, um, you know, really dealing with the huge budget shortfall. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there might be a lot of, uh, you know, side issues, but I think that, you know, if the, if the House and the Senate, for that matter, too, really take the optics issue of how are we going to fix the economy, mm -hmm. I think that that's really priority number one. That's right. And Sophie, good to see you. Happy New Year. Um, New incoming House Speaker Brian Egolf from Santa Fe has echoed exactly what Tom's mentioning, that the laser focus is going to be on economics and the, our situation here. And, and my expectation mm -hmm. as well is that this legislature, this, this House in particular, is going to try to focus on the old prime the, pr prime the pump strategy, which um, is trying to find ways to inject funds into our economy. Mm -hmm. um, and that I should, I, I would expect, I, I would frankly, I would hope, that um, the legislature would be looking at ways to gain revenue in order to do that. Right. Um, we certainly, you know, even with high profile infrastructure projects that are going on right now, um, I think there's an opportunity for more. Um, and the legislature and, and EGOLF in particular have really signaled, I think, a, a change back toward um, what we would expect from a more progressive or a more liberal legislature. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, uh, Sophie mentioned in revenue, Mary Torres, mm -hmm. that you know the idea of the governor is still holding firm, saying revenue enhancement, meaning taxes, right. is not going to be on the table for right. her. I, I'm, I'm curious what you think, however, if, if it becomes overwhelming, you know, that the agreement in the legislature, which we can assume meaning the agreement from the populace, says we should do this, doesn't that put her in a bit of a box at that point? I think it does, and yeah. I think that we're we're just going to have to raise taxes, especially just where our economy is. I think mm -hmm. we're going to have to have to do that. And so I'm hoping that she will um, follow through on that. Right. But, you know, I want to just Please. follow up on something that mm -hmm. you mentioned about Don Tripp. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm from Socorro and I've known him all my life. And I believe that he resigned just for the reasons he said he resigned. You know, I, we were, the party that I was representing was not voted back in. Right. So it's time to move on. And right. I just thought it was elegant and very classy of him to resign the way he did and especially he says I'm going to uh, assure that there's a smooth transition of power mm -hmm. and and do that so I just thought I I thought the way he handled it was just just right yeah interesting so, we'll see how that yeah. plays out swinging back to your right back to Sobe mm -hmm. I want to stay on revenues here for sure. a quick second uh, 
gas tax has been floated out there. We've had some editorials in the journal in the last couple of days about revenue enhancement. Again, the drumbeat is starting. There's something happening. Other Republicans are starting to talk about this. Mm -hmm. right. You know, that, you know, fiscal conservatives, maybe I should say more. So, sure, mm -hmm. and, and it, I think that we are finally, finally reaching the point at which um, our, our elected leaders, maybe not the one at the top, are starting mm -hmm. to realize you cannot cut your way out of these financial problems. Right. It's, we have too many people who are going unemployed in New Mexico because mm -hmm. we see this decrease in employment in the state. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can anticipate, probably under the Trump administration, a decrease in federal employment right. here in New Mexico, a decrease in federal funds. Mm -hmm. And so as we look at those things, uh, you know, unless somehow they find a way to get a whole lot of New Mexicans to move out of the state to make our numbers look better, which mm -hmm. is not what I'm actually mm -hmm. recommending, mm -hmm. um, they're going to have to start being more proactive. Uh, the, one, the one concern I do have is, is um, you know, one of the things that's been floated, we've heard food tax, right. highly regressive taxes have really been floated out there. Mm -hmm. They seem punitive given the current economic climate. Including the gas tax? Would, I, they, would you slot that under for, the same? For many people, okay. yes, that would be. Um, that would be a real challenge in terms of their budgets, yeah. and it's not easy to, you know, how do you how do you say to somebody who's who's barely getting by, um, we'll give you a tax credit and hopefully that'll cover your gas. It just doesn't right. it doesn't work that right. way. Right, exactly. What do you think, Christine? Well, I wanted mm -hmm. to add also that uh, besides revenue enhancement uh, questions, which are so important, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, is the uh, ethics campaign finance reform. Yes. Mm -hmm. That agenda is really important and the timing again uh, is particularly good given that the statewide, the state official who oversees campaign finance right. reform and reporting is Maggie Toulouse Oliver right. ushered in with that as a campaign right. pledge. I exactly. think even better than that, the timing is beautiful. Peter Worth making his announcement about wanting to approach campaign finance reform right after the shenanigans in, U in the U.S. Congress. So people are actually focused right. on right. ethics, yep. yes. on yes. legislative ethics right yes. now. Right. And then we have right away Santa Fe saying, and, and we're going to address that. Mm -hmm. And what happened in Congress was that the Republicans go back to D.C. and immediately try to dismantle the independent group mm -hmm. that was going to enforce ethics or investigate ethics violations mm -hmm. and, uh, and weaken it, and then they had to turn make a turnabout. Right. Make yeah. A backlash. yeah. And actually, before we kind of go on to the big sure. federal stuff, to back on the state level, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't think you can cut or tax your way out of the situation New Mexico's in. I mean, you know, if you're a Republican, you're saying, I'm not going to tax. If you're Democrat, I'm not going to cut. Um, I think that there is a real opportunity, as I've said before, uh, that to really take the tax revenue structure in the state and to turn it around. I mean, mm -hmm. and, you know, could that mean some revenue enhancements or taxes? Possibly. Mm -hmm. um, could it mean that other areas get cut? Possibly as well. Mm -hmm. But I think instead of going to this business as usual of going into what are we going to cut or what are we going to tax, there really has to be, and this is where the opportunity lies, uh, to really say how are we going to fix our issue of taxes in general mm -hmm. and how we you know, fund government and what is important in government. And I think that that's really where the opportunity is. It provides a win for the governor. Mm -hmm. uh, it also provides the win for new Newly controlled, uh, you know, speaker and uh, Senate uh, majority leaders. Mm -hmm. Good point there. I appreciate that. Pe people are looking for a little bit more than just Absolutely. the normal stuff because we're not in normal times. Exactly. Let's right. we'll switch gears. The last couple of minutes, guys. I'll start with Mary on this. Uh, some other things kind of burbling out uh, mm -hmm. early before the session starts. Bill Ream here in Albuquerque, Republican. He wants to introduce again legislation to limit buyouts for coaches in obviously uh, university presidents. We just had our university president, of course, leave at the end of this past year, right. just a few short days ago. Um, he's not a parachuted person, he's right. still around, but you, we've had this in the past. What do you think the chances of that are? I think it's a great idea yeah. in theory. I mean, it sounds really great. We're just going to get rid of the golden parachutes. It's going to help the taxpayers, right. ex especially in when times are tough for universities, et cetera. But I don't think it's really realistic okay. because we want to attract the cream of the crop. Right. And the best way to do that is to offer them money with golden parachutes and right. and so it's it's a great idea in theory and I I wish I wish them well but I I just think realistically mm -hmm. it's just not going to be a good Would you agree idea. with that? Right, yeah, my suspicion tough, is that yeah. in order to compete if you if you 
if you said, okay, no golden parachutes, first of all, I think it's going to become much more difficult to recruit in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that then what we're going to see is the university saying, we just need to pay more up front. If we're not going to be able to, to right. tie a golden parachute right. to the end, we're going to have to increase salaries. For and where's our... the money coming from? Exactly. <laughs> so. exactly. Interesting right. point there, yeah. Well, this is tackling major industries in a way, university mm -hmm. administration and athletics. Right. Mm -hmm. Those right. things are going to be hard to budge. That's right. But I congratulate this representative for trying mm -hmm. because people are sick and tired of these people who fail at their jobs. Mm -hmm. I must uh, respectfully disagree. Mm -hmm. I, as a faculty mm -hmm. member, thought there were a, a couple of other way better candidates mm -hmm. than oh. were chosen. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see them as the cream of mm -hmm. the crop. I saw them ill-fitted to mm -hmm. UNM and the academic mission. Mm -hmm. uh, but people want accountability. Right. That's what we're talking uh, about. Mm -hmm. All of us in our respective jobs have right. to be accountable. That's right. That's right. And you reward failure? Right. This, this has got to stop. At least calling the question, perhaps, mm -hmm will give us some kind of measure of accountability that will balance out these golden parachutes that I think are not mm -hmm. deserved. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you know, and I think that what he wants to do in addition to getting rid of golden parachutes is he wants to set minimum duties and performance requirements, limit contracts to two years. Those are great ideas and especially tying it to standards perhaps will more address what the um, faculty, the faculty concerns, perhaps mm -hmm. that would be. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it really comes down to, you know, to Sophie's point, do you want to pay me now or do you want to pay me later? Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, the way the university has set up the agreement with Coach Davey, who has done a fantastic job with the right. football right. team, I think that's a good model. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't, that model just didn't seem to work with Dr. Frank. And actually, I think that issue is much larger than, you know, the whole buyout that's good point. Uh, conversation. Right. That was right. just a, that's right. that was a fumbled issue right. altogether. And that we are all still in the dark about what happened on there. Yeah. Now, when we come back to the line, we'll look at some of the president elect's appointments and their possible impact on the land of enchantment.